Hi everyone, this is Nandini Nair, immigration partner here at Green Spoon Martyr in Edison, New Jersey. It's finally out. After days and days of guesswork, negotiations, lobbying on many different sides, the administration has issued the executive order or presidential proclamation yesterday. So what does it exactly say? So here is just the real basics of this and I'll go into a little bit more detail in a minute. The basics is that the administration is barring entry into the United States, certain work visa individuals who are outside the United States as of yesterday from coming into the United States if they do not have a visa issued in their passport, if they do not have an advance parole, if they do not have some sort of transportation letter allowing them to enter the United States. What are the visa categories that are impacted by this? These are the H1s, the L1s, and the J1s, and their accompanying dependents, so H4s, L2s, J2s. So that's really important to understand that it's just not only for the principal, but it is also going to be for the dependents. So what about if you do have a visa issued in your passport? The way it has been um, listed in the executive order, it looks like anyone who actually has the physical visa issued on their passport that remains valid for the classification that they are trying to enter for, they are going to be exempt from this ban. What about individuals who have an expired visa and currently and they have not been able to get a new visa issued because the consulates are closed, will they also be counted against the exemptions? We don't yet know. Uh, we are waiting for some detailed guidance on this because those are individuals who may be, have been in the United States, they have been happen to leave, uh, go on vacation, be stuck due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the consulates closed, they're maybe they're appointments were rescheduled and they're just waiting it out. Um, will these individuals be impacted? At this moment, we don't have enough information and details to determine um, whether they are also banned from re-entry. We are hoping they are not because they are have been here, they're probably still working, maybe probably remotely, and they should not be necessarily subject to this. But we don't, again, have enough guidance at this point. We also don't have guidance if families are separated, whether the principal is still here um, on an H in the United States working, maybe the dependents have traveled abroad and they were unable to get their visas issued for, because the consulate's closed, will they be also banned from coming back in? Again, um, the way it's reading, it looks like it, but again, we have to wait for the agency to come out with more details on it. A lot of these proclamations are written um, in very general terms and the practicalities have to come at a later time. So we still need to wait this out. It definitely does mean that individuals who've never had visas issued are going to be barred from coming back into the, coming into the United States till at least December 31st, 2020. So that we are absolutely sure of. In regard to um, L1s, um, I've been asked questions, well, does it mean all L1s? Because their L1s are separated into two different categories, A's and B's. And at this, the way the reading is, it's all L's, which we're very surprised about because we were expecting a carve-out um, exemption for the L1As, who usually are the CEOs, the executives, managers. Um, and so we thought that they would at least, um, t you know, put them as an exemption. What about the J's? The J's are uh, separated into um, seasonal work, summer work. Um, we are looking at trainees, we're even teachers though, and we have a shortage of teachers in the United States, but they are also part of this ban. Now, again, we're waiting to see if somebody who was here as a teacher maybe last year um, and is coming back when the school reopens, are they going, and they don't have a visa issued on their passport, but obviously they were here in the United States previously, will they be subject to this ban? Does it impact individuals who are here in the United States? On the face of it, no, it doesn't. Um, however, does it mean that you should, you 
would um, be able to travel and let's say you have an expired visa get a new visa issued on your passport that again is something that we need to wait out at this time I would tell anybody who's in the United States on a work visa not to travel first of all consulates are not open a lot of countries borders are still remain closed um, the spikes in COVID-19 is high in a lot of countries, so it is prudent to stay in the United States and not travel at this point. However, you know, if there is a situation that requires you have to travel, will you be able to come back in? If you have an expired visa, again, we don't have those final details yet. Um, we should hopefully have them shortly, and, then, and I'll let you know if anything changes in that regard. What about F1s? What about E3s? Right now, there is no impact on any of those categories. So if you're a student coming in or coming back, starting school, starting university in the fall, right now there is no impact. You should be able to come in if you have a visa. Now the question a lot of people are asking is, well, Nandini, what does it matter? The consulates are closed anyway. And that's true, that's exactly right. What does it matter anyway because you're not able to get a visa appointment, you're not able to get the stamp anyway. Um, and what is the expectation when these consulates will open? Right now, we don't know. Um, again, we believe that countries are, um, the consulates are gonna open probably country by country, depending on where uh, the spikes are, where the hotspots are. Um, you know, most of the people who are watching these videos are from India, and I get a lot of questions from um, Indian nationals as when are the consoles gonna open in India? I don't think it's gonna open maybe in October. It might even push out because the spikes are so high in um, India right now. So what, so this ban, this entry, may have a null effect anyway because the concerts are not open at this time but it, uh, the other part is it does prevent people from traveling who are already here in the united states and in some ways you know keeps them almost like a prisoner here because they they're scared or they don't know if they have an expired visa will they be able to go to the concert come back and, and be able to re-enter even if the concerts were open so these are things that have to be considered I think there's a lot of details still yet to come. Um, I know that there are a lot and lots of negotiations going on in regard to revamping the H-1B program, adding excessive fees to it, changing how certain definitions of the program have been um, going on. Uh, there are definitely uh, many things, talk uh, conversations going about revising the STEM OPT program, if not eliminating that STEM OPT program, taking away the H4 EAD program. So there's multiple things that are going to be um, coming down. We are anticipating some rulemaking in July, and um, you know, hopefully there will be a lot of. Um, um, negotiations there will be a lot of comments um, against elimination of a lot of these programs that will hopefully make the administration think twice um, you know about ch chopping them all off at this point but we we have to know that these are things that are still coming and it does not mean just this this is the end of it, it it's not it, I definitely believe that until November um, we are going to continue to see these things come forward we are going to hear about other bands possibly um, revamping a lot of a lot of programs that are have been in existence for um, decades but until we have more information what you need to know today is that the entry ban goes into effect 12.01 a.m. June 24th it is um, banning entry of uh, H1s their dependents L1s their dependents J's their dependents entry into the United States till December 31st, 2020, if you are outside the United States, if you do not have a visa issued on your passport, if you do not have a travel document to re-enter the United States. At this time, we again do not have enough information to know whether it will affect anyone who previously had a visa and just needs to go and get a new stamp in their passports. As soon as I get any more information, I'm definitely going to come out and let you all know about that. Until then, stay put. Don't travel if you don't have to. Um, wait on the guidance to come out before you're making any further decisions. 
All right, thank you so much, and I will speak to you next time.